listening to the international hit show, The Baby Names Podcast. And here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss Katz. And we're the founders of BabyNames.com. And we're sisters, too. You can't help that. Oh, well. Anyway, our first segment is Names We've Discovered Since the Last Episode, and I've been watching a cool show on Netflix called Ultraviolet, and it's made in Poland. So, of course, I'm perusing all the cool Polish names, and here's some of the ones that I've discovered. Ola as a nickname for Alexandra. She's the main character. Kinga, originally a Hungarian name meaning bravery in war. Jacek, which is spelled J-A-C-E-K, which is actually a Polish form of hyacinth, like the flower, but it's male name. Piast, the Piast dynasty, were the first rulers of Poland, and the founder was legendary Piast Kolodziej. See how great I did that? I had practice. Piast is probably a variation of the Polish term Piastun, meaning custodian or keeper. Um, I didn't know that Henio was a nickname for Henrik, which is the Polish form of Henry. And then there were a lot of characters named Bartosz, which is the Polish form of Bartholomew. Okay, and I bet all of you are now going to go out and name your children these names. They're cool. I like Kinga. There's also the Hungarian name Erzabet, but you don't want to use that. Erzabet, or Elizabeth Bathory, or Battery, is one of the most famous female serial killers of all time. Oh, that's cool. Where can I learn about her? Oh, well, Wikipedia has a lot about her, but watch out. She's pretty gross. Ooh, maybe there's a true crime podcast that's covered her story. That would be cool. Definitely. And she was on that show, oh, what is that called? Lore. Oh, There yeah. was a whole episode about her on Lore. You mean on the TV show or the podcast? TV show. Then I'm going to look it up. Anyway, the topic of the week this week is musical names. Excuse me. Excuse me. I had some names, too. As far as interesting names I found, (laughs) I looked at the Social Security list for the 1880s because everyone does that. Right. And saw some cute girl names. And those are Minnie, Cora, and Bessie. Hattie was there, and so was Maddie, but M A T T I E. Mm-hmm. Also, I liked Lula and Jennifer. At least it's not Luna. Yeah, I guess. Boys' names that I liked were Grover, <laughs> Otto, Guy, and August, just like our great grandfather. Well, Cora is a Downton Abbey name. I think yes. that's beautiful. It means heart. Oh, Minnie, like our dog. Right, but this one's spelled... Or mouse. Yeah, this one's spelled like Minnie Mouse. Well, that came before Minnie Mouse. I don't think there were a lot of Minis named after the mouse. Probably not. Cool. Nice names. So, Jennifer, what's the topic of the week? (laughs) The topic of the week is musical names and name rhythm. I'm going to start with name rhythm since I was a music major, so this is totally in my wheelhouse. There are really two types of rhythm in how we speak names aloud. And when I demonstrate name rhythm, I usually include just the first and last name because that's how we normally introduce ourselves to other people. Hello, I'd like you to meet my sister, Mallory Katz. Now, sometimes the first name determines the rhythm, sometimes the last. Mallory Katz, for example, is a triplet rhythm, one, two, three, one. Mm. The emphasis is on every third beat. Now, if your name had been Elizabeth Katz, it would also be triplet. Even though the first name has four syllables, the emphasis is on the second one. And the E in Elizabeth is what we call in music a pickup. Uh, since it's not emphasized. So the emphasis is still on every three syllables. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Katz. Even if your last name had been two syllables, let's say Katzer, you would say it in a triplet rhythm because it was already set up by your first name. Hi, my name is Mallory Katzer. Mallory Katzer. But if your name was Mary Katzer, it would be a duplet rhythm, which is one, two, one, two, because the emphasis is on every second syllable. Hmm. So some examples of triplet names are Jennifer Aniston, Harrison Ford, 
Abraham Lincoln, Willem Dafoe, even though both first and last names are two syllables, it's a triplet rhythm because his last name is emphasized on the last syllable, Willem Dafoe. And some examples of duplet rhythms are Captain Marvel, Anna Kendrick, Harry Potter, Bradley Cooper, Miley Cyrus, Idris Elba, Kit Harrington. So even though there's three syllables in his last name, you pause for that second beat after Kit. Kit Harrington. In Western culture, we tend to gravitate toward the triplet rhythm. It sounds kind of more poetic to our ears. Does name rhythm matter when you're naming your baby, though? Well, not really. Sometimes it's awkward if your first name is one rhythm and your last name is the other. For example, Lady Gaga's real name is Stephanie Germanata. Stephanie is a triplet rhythm, while Germanata is duplet. Um, but it's not really critical to consider name rhythm when naming your baby. It's just something to think about when you're saying the name out loud in your introduction test. Why or why it might not sound right to your ears, but everyone has different musical preferences. Okay, so let's get into some musical names. Musical names can be from music notation, musical instruments, or even music composers. Like one of Miranda's favorite names is Cadence, and she was so mad when it was used in the TV show Nashville for Juliet's fictional baby. A cadence is the end of a musical phrase. It also means the tone or inflection in your voice. Like Glenda the Good Witch has a sing-song cadence to her voice. A really popular musical name that's at the top of the charts right now is Aria. An aria is a solo vocal piece in an opera or larger work sung by either a man or a woman. However, it's popular because of the TV show Game of Thrones right now but it's spelled Aria, A-R-Y-A. But it's also spelled A-R-I-A in Pretty Little Liars, which is also a pretty popular show based on the books. Not as big as Game of Thrones, though. Probably not. Another popular musical name is Harper, a gender-neutral name we mentioned in the last episode. Other musical names are Calliope, Melody, Harmony, Choir, Cantata, Coda, jazz, which is usually short for jasmine, but it could stand on its own. Allegra, which means play it fast. Lyric, carol, rhapsody, and what about sonata? Sounds like snata. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend sonata. On the boys' side, there's clef, allegro, forte, which means strong. How about sforzando? That means really strong. Well, if you can spell Sforzando, you can use that too. Calypso, nickname Cal. So those are musical terms and types. Now on to instruments. Banjo is a popular name in Australia. Reed would work, as in reed instruments, like the oboe and clarinet. Reed is a good one. Better than oboe. Although that might be a cool name too. Clarinet would work for a girl since it's close to the name Clara. Lyra, but not lyre. Hey, how about timpani? That's big and strong. Marimba and mbira. I used to love to play the mbira, although I'm not very good at it. Timpani sounds too much like tampon. Thank you very much. And when did you play a mbira? <laughs> in music school, in our music culture class. And they sell them in a lot of these, um, like, international culture stores. It's just like a little thumb piano type of thing. Oh, the little thumb piano. I know what you're you talking about. You know what I'm about. talking about. They have little metal things. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They're fun to play. I'm not great at it, but I, I like playing it. And my final for that class was on the ocarina, and that would be a cool name. I do like ocarina. And how about chord for a boy, with or without the H? Oh, that's nice. And there is viola or viola, as in actress Viola Davis. Mandolin. Mary Mandolin. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> There's bell and piccolo. Zither. How's that? Didn't you used to have a zither when you were a kid? I did. It was the kind that you held down the buttons and you would slide the song cardboard underneath. 
All right, on that note, ha ha ha, here are some instruments to avoid. The hurdy-gurdy. You could name her Gertie. Oh, Gertie's kind of cute. And then her then her nickname could be hurdy-gurdy. But wasn't Gertie the little girl in E.T., G-E-R-T-I-E? Yeah. I like that name, actually. That's cute for Gertrude. It is cute. Yeah. Well, I like Gertie. Um, Penny Whistle, Gong, Bongo. I bet there's a person out there named Bongo. Maybe as a nickname. Do not name your child Didgeridoo or Idiophone. Nice impression of a Didgeridoo. I could have actually gotten a sound effect for that. (laughs) Oh my gosh. This episode, I apologize. I do apologize. We usually record in the morning, folks, and it's like six o'clock at night, and it's almost my bedtime. Okay. (laughs) How about Melophone? That's your new nickname. All right. Done with instruments. All right. And now we can talk about musicians. And we've said that it's been a popular trend to use last names as first names. And many parents are doing just that to honor their favorite musicians. Like Lennon for John, Chapin for Harry, Jagger for Mick, that's a big one. Hendrix for Jimmy, Jackson maybe for Michael. Really? Do you think that's from Michael? Maybe. There's Joplin for Janice, as we discussed in another episode. Yeah, Presley for Elvis, Cash for Johnny, Santana for Carlos. It'll be interesting to see if after the current movie about Freddie Mercury, if Mercury will hop onto the charts. Or Freddie. Mm-hmm. I wonder if future parents are going to name their baby Swift, Bieber, Aguilera, or Sheeran. I'm going to say no. I think newer parents might honor their first names as stars, but not the last names of the 21st century. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that either. Now, Stephanie or Stefani for Gwen and Gaga, maybe. It's spelled the exact same way. And we shouldn't fail to include the classic musicians and composers like Amadeus, which was Mozart's middle name, but the title of the musical and movie about his life. Rock me, Amadeus. Other composers, (laughs) thank you, Jennifer, (laughs) are... (laughs) Rock me, Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. Hey, this is the musical episode. Okay, other composers are Bach, Chopin, Brahms. Vivaldi would be a good one, nicknamed Vivi. Now, one of my favorite composers is Tchaikovsky, but not sure that would work as a first name. Maybe for your next cat. Possibly. Mahler, Puccini, (laughs) Puccini, (laughs) Puccini, Bizet, (laughs) Sibelius. That would be cool. I think they'd all work, and they would advertise just how cultured you are as a parent. And wait, speaking of cultured, here's an aside. I thought that I could surely go on Jeopardy because I play the app all the time and I win tons of imaginary money. Oh, well, there you go. I know. (laughs) So I started watching the show and I was extremely humbled. I'm like, nope, those people are so smart. I mean, I'm smart, but those people are like computer smart. I couldn't even answer the musical questions. And forget geography. That is something that's completely missing from our education for some reason. All right. Well, you have to get on Jeopardy before you can (laughs) go on Jeopardy. Are we done with musical names? I think so, folks. Don't name your kid bassoon. Okay, now I'm done. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. (laughs) Nicole Polizzi, best known as Snooky from Jersey Shore, is expecting her third child with husband Joy-Z Johnny. Shore. What? Jersey Shore. All right. Nicole Polizzi, best known as Snooky from Jersey Shore, is expecting her third child with husband Johnny Laval or Lavalli. She currently has a daughter, Giovanni Marie, who's four, and a son, Lorenzo Dominic, who's six. Very traditional Italian names. I'm guessing they'll stick with that naming convention. They probably will. We found out that Gabrielle Union has named her daughter Cavia James Union Wade. 
Gabrielle said the baby has many nicknames, including but not limited to Cov, Cavi, Cavi Baby, Cavi J, Jamie KJ, Nugget, Nug, and Pooters. Pooters? She said they wanted to include Gabrielle's family in her name. So James was from her Uncle James, who is also her godfather. And then she used her surname, Union, as the baby's second middle name. All righty. Well, actress Jessica Chastain and her husband, John Luca Passi de Preposula, had a baby via surrogate in April, E! News Ooh. reports. The couple reportedly named their daughter Giulietta Chastain Passi, another beautiful Italian name. Jessica is known for her roles in Interstellar, Zero Dark Thirty, and The Martian, and will have a role in the upcoming It Chapter 2. Ooh, I didn't even know there was going to be a Chapter 2. How how could you not? Did you see It Chapter 1? I did. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Big Brother 19 contestant Christmas Abbott had a baby in October, a boy named Loyal Atticus. Christmas finished third in that season, which was an amazing feat since most of the time she was in crutches from an onset injury. Abbott is a CrossFit Games competitor, Olympic weightlifter, entrepreneur, and currently opens and operates a gym in North Carolina. Well, almost a month after Pippa Middleton and her husband James Matthews welcomed their baby boy on October 15th, they have finally revealed his name. Arthur Michael William Matthews. The name Arthur is of Welsh origin, meaning bear. The name Michael is as significant as it's both the name of Pippa's father and the name of James's late brother, who died at age 22 in 1999 after reaching the summit of Mount Everest. Oh, wow. Oh, was that in the big disaster, I wonder? That was in 1999, I think, that uh, John Krakauer wrote the book about. Let's look that up. James' younger brother, Spencer Matthews, also used Michael as his son's middle name to honor their brother. Arthur is also the middle name of Kate Middleton and Prince William's son, Louis. Louis! Singer Aaron Carter posted on Instagram that his new album is out and, quote, I'm going to be proposing soon to my girlfriend and we might just be expecting, unquote. His girlfriend is artist Lena Valentina. Miranda's going to be heartbroken. She loved him when she was like six and met him when she was in high school. Well, rapper Lil Baby is expecting a Lil Baby. Had to do that. He announced it on Instagram with a pic of his pregnant girlfriend and the little male symbol, but nothing else. Baby has at least one other child, a son named Jason. Fantastic Beast star Catherine Waterston is expecting... Waterston, 38, is the daughter of Sam, known for playing Jack McCoy on Law & Order, but no other information has been released. Country singer Jake Owen is expecting his second child with his girlfriend, interior designer Erica Hartline. Jake's real name is Joshua Ryan. Hmm. The baby will join six-year-old daughter Olive Pearl, who goes by Pearl, from his previous marriage to Lacey Buchanan. If I had a baby named Olive, I'd name her middle name Mew, like the sheep. Get it? Olive you. Aww. Aww. That's cute, but then she might go by you. Go buy me where? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. And that's it for Celebrity Baby News. For details about these stories and up to the minutes, blah. <laughs> <laughs> up to the minute, blah. <laughs> Visit the Celebrity Baby blog on babynames.com. Just click Celebrity in the menu. Thank you for taking my lawn. <laughs> and now we take letters from you our listeners mal this first one is just for you dear mallory i'm directing this question to you because you are the mental health professional do you think giving a child a bad name or something that is teasable can affect him or her their entire lives Do you think a name can contribute to bullying trauma? My husband is really worried about this, but as you guys have said, with the bullying laws in place, it might might not be that much of an issue anymore. What do you think? Ramona H. Actually, I do think it can affect a child if you give them a name that is teasable. However, it's hard to find a name that doesn't rhyme with something unpleasant. For instance, Mallory rhymes with calorie, and I've been known to eat a few. 
Then there were mean kids that called me malfunction, which really hurt my feelings. Really? Back before computers even? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Mallory Aww. malfunction. So sometimes no matter how unusual you name your child, you might still have a child that ends up being teased. Yeah. That being said, said you also don't want to put them out there without a chance either naming a boy dick is probably not fair nowadays naming him richard and if he chooses to call himself dick that's another story he's not gonna choose to call himself dick <laughs> he, he might there are a few, dicky there are a few dicks out there a lot of dicks out there <laughs> It's true there are bullying laws in place, but kids may still resent you for giving them a name that becomes a struggle. Growing up is hard enough. Why give your kids another challenge? True. However, however, I don't know what you had in mind. Please write back with some names because there is such a wide variety of options here that could or could not be teasable and might or might not be something I consider problematic. There was a couple who asked me if they could name their son bullseye bullseye and i say this over and over again because they were serious they wanted to name their son bullseye and i was like no he'll be mercilessly teased and they their answer was not in the schools that we're gonna send them to what the hell does that mean <laughs> so i don't know what schools those are but <laughs> the bow and arrow school <laughs> on mars or something <laughs> but so Anyway, they decided against Bullseye at the last minute, thank God. Okay, here's our second letter. Dear Jennifer and Mallory, I love color names like Beyonce's Blue Ivy. I'm in the process of trying to conceive and already thinking of names. I'm actually leaning toward gray for a boy, but stuck on a girl's name. I definitely don't want to use pink, although I love the singer, but there are too many connotations to the name. What are your honest opinions on these color names? Auburn, tangerine, turquoise, and indigo. I want your honest opinions, so I'm not going to tell you my fave. Thanks, and I love listening to your show. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Jasmine. Well, I like Auburn. It's kind of a great alternative to the name Autumn. I'm not so sure about Tangerine or Turquoise. I guess they're okay, but they're a little off the beaten track. Indigo, I think, is beautiful. It's a great color. But it might be associated with indigo children who are, I think, mm. psychic or highly sensitive or something like that. I've never heard of that. But I think it still could be used. Call her Indy, which is kind of cute. Mm, that is cute. I just found a cool name that is a color name called Farren, F-A-R-R-E-N, which means the color iron gray comes from the same root. It's totally gender neutral, although it's similar to Farah, as in Fawcett. Oh, that's a current reference. Okay, um, I think we just found a girl's name that fits in the teasing category, Tangerine. Please don't name your child Tangerine. Turquoise is okay, Auburn and Indigo are pretty, and Jen, I like Farron too. Yay, so you choose Farron. I don't know what her last name is, she didn't sign it, but good luck with your color names. Don't miss the next episode when we go over the top baby names of the year and do some predictions for 2019. That will be an exciting one. It will. So subscribe to the podcast to make sure it's downloaded to your device. And tell a friend. As you know, the Baby Names podcast is more about names than it is about babies. So tell all your friends to tune in. And come chat with Jennifer and me in our Facebook group. We talk about the podcast, names, and everything naming. It's a great place to ask us questions and get personal advice or just banter about names. Facebook.com slash group slash baby names podcast. Cheshitch, Mallory Cats. I'm learning so much Polish from Ultraviolet. How do you say you're crazy? <laughs> I don't know, but I do know how to say I love you. Kocham Cie. I think that's right. Well, in conclusion, you. Don't make fun of Polish. I'm not making fun of Polish. I just can't say it. Cheshitch. Cheshitch. 
that means bye. Can I just say this makes great podcasts? And Kokum Che. Kokum Che. And Kochami, our older sisters, Sue E. Kate. And our listeners. Keep tuning in. Bye, guys. Bye. Naraje. Naraje.